Hello, and once again, welcome to the Freeholder Alpha Let's Play series. Uh, this is covering the Alpha 4.5. Um, basically, uh, we had an Alpha 4, but the features in it, uh, which included the new battle system, weren't as up to snuff as they are now, so we thought we would hold off for a little while and give you guys something a little more substantial. And here it is, the 4.5 Alpha. So, the biggest feature that's been added is uh, the combat system which includes a whole host of new and fun things that I'll be talking about as we go through this. So um, let's get started here and I'll make a warrior character, the new class that's available. So the Steadfast Warrior, uh, you can see they have four starting abilities, just like everybody else. Uh, generally, mostly combat related. The first three are, the fourth is about crafting. Uh, we'll leave that alone for the moment and then warriors can equip uh, better weapons and armor than everybody else and generally are much better at hitting people in combat. They're designed to uh, smash things. So uh, generally speaking for early on people, tough is a great choice, especially if you're going to be fighting alone because it makes you able to absorb more punishment before going down and also you're not as likely to end combat and be hurt. So uh, that's good. Common arc is a special attack which is really strong uh, but is limited to uh, Basically, you have to use one of your own reaction attacks, I'll get into that. And then Expert Fencer is uh, more like a defensive-oriented skill, where you get more reaction attacks and can uh, fight off flanking attacks. It just kind of makes you a quicker, more defensive fighter. So, uh, combining these up can make you pretty formidable pretty quickly. Um, I think I'll just take Tough for now. So, uh, you might have noticed, or not, the little question mark down here. Uh, this is a, a group of quick tips for people with questions such as, you know, what is this, what's happening, you know, very relevant questions like that. So if you click on the question, uh, you'll come up with a series of tips here that you can click through, uh, right click to back up, and then once you click through them forward or back, it'll close. So uh, you can have a look at those at your leisure, but for people that have never played before and have no idea, like, for example, to click and drag people to play them, which is a uh, not uncommon complaint. Uh, that question mark may help you with such queries. There's a lot more to learn, but that just kind of gives you enough to start playing around. Which is the whole point of this thing. I mean, it's a little bit sandboxy in that way. Um, you know, you just kind of generate a world and start poking around. You might get killed, but you'll probably learn something, right? So, let's take a look at the overall world map here, since this is where the combat is happening at the moment. Uh, later on, there's going to be bandits tooling around on your lands and taking them over and being a hassle, but that's uh, not just yet. For now, all of the action is centered around here, so, uh, and specifically around the towns. You can see in this case we have a regular town up at the top, a hill town, and a city here. So, you can see there's a couple of icons on the map that weren't here before. Uh, in the upper left here of the hex, you can see a little crest. Uh, that shows sort of the ownership of that tile. Obviously, the freeholder, that's you, the little raven. Uh, you own your villa. And uh, around you are a couple of tiles. This sort of weird-looking bear thing. I'm not sure what that is. So, sorry. <laughs> that is uh, a neutral town, or neutrally owned, I guess you could say. Independent. And then this uh, very poorly uh, drawn golden eagle here is Rome. And they generally are in control of the market and will be for the time being. It's going to be a pretty advanced mechanic that lets you seize it. Though it is my intention that you be able to seize it. Uh, so basically the other icon here you can see it's a little dagger with some gold. I mean hopefully you can see it. It's not terribly clear. And then there's a text on it telling you the general concentration of bandits. So you can see all three cities seem to have a low bandit presence. Uh, basically any place with a low bandit presence or more can be patrolled. I'll, take, I'll show you here. You go over a town and then you look at the combat tab, you can see there's a patrol, uh, which I'll get to assault in a little bit, but uh, basically patrol an area where bandit activity has been reported looking for trouble. It reduces the bandit level, but there's a chance for battle. So this is the way that you would train up people for combat generally that uh, weren't already warriors. Uh, you'd send them, you know, roaming around trying to keep peace in order. Um, if you succeed without running into anybody, then the general bandit level will drop, you'll get some combat XP. But uh, you might also have a random battle, and when that happens, you'll have to fight off the bandit. If you win, there's a small chance the town will like you more, depending on how you know big the bandit raid was that you repelled. Um, let's see. So, 
that's pretty much it for patrolling. I'll show that in a little bit. I kind of want to... I, I thought I might mention, too, that the uh, warrior... And don't mind the characters, they're kind of messed up right now. This is all in anticipation of uh, the new character screen, which we have the art for, mostly. But I have to finish up a few things. So everything is functional, but some of the uh, art is a little bit strange. Uh, so anyway, you'll notice that my warrior started with a short sword and studded leather and a light shield. A pretty hefty <clears throat> starting lineup of equipment, especially since if I want them to be fighting alone, uh, they will pretty much just get creamed if they're more or less unarmed. So I guess for fun I'll just poke around at one of these places and see if I can't run into somebody. I probably won't. Oh, nope, never mind. Alright, well this should be pretty doable. It's just a single bandit cutthroat. Okay, so hopefully... Okay, good, it's my turn. I can explain a little bit about combat while I'm, uh... Well, before I start murdering this guy here. <clears throat> so basically, you'll see at the top here, every time there's a round of combat, everybody gets a move each round. And... Uh... It, or like there's to say, they get one action each round, and there's an initiative order that everybody rolls for, and then the order is displayed at the top, so you can see I'm first, and then the bandit is after me. In a larger order, you can see more people at the top. <clears throat> so when it's your turn, uh, you basically can choose from a number of different actions depending on where you're standing in the lineup. Obviously this is very simple, um, but I can either strike at him or go into a guard stance in this case. Uh, before I do that though, I'll explain uh, these little diamonds under me here are my toughness. It's basically hit points. Uh, blues are worth three and greens are one each, so I have a total of five. Uh, depending on how hard I get hit, I lose one, two, or three hit points at a time. Uh, also, I might start bleeding or have other status ailments happening which are displayed with particles. Blood particles. Um, let's see. So, uh, basically, you can't see what your enemy's toughness is, although cutthroats are, are quite fragile. They're not too bad at dodging from time to time. Um, I see no reason not to just let him come at me, because the last major feature of combat in this is that uh, you have these things called reactions. And any time an enemy takes, for example, a melee attack at you and you have a reaction, you'll get an immediate and simultaneous melee attack at them as they come in. So, um, for example, if I guard, I can gain another attack plus a dodge bonus. So if I'm being assaulted by a lot of people, it's actually a pretty advantageous thing to do. Ah, see, there he goes. He missed me and then I hit him back and got him in one shot. Yeah, it's just kind of a... Uh, most combat is very quick. The idea is it's more like quote-unquote realistic, and as much as you don't just sit there for like 30 minutes pounding on each other, doing hundreds and hundreds of hit points of damage, uh, generally just a few rounds is what it takes for it to end, either in your favor or their favor. Uh, so I kind of skipped over the victory screen in that case, but you took a look at it. I got a dagger, I got a little bit of XP, and uh, I got this nifty victory song that I wrote not that long ago. Um, so I can show you now also at the market I may as well just send Kaius to go for real. Uh, there's a sell equipment tab. If you have anything that's sellable, it'll just pop up here and you can click on it and it will sort of gray out and you'll know you're selling it and it'll reflect in your funds. Um, it doesn't take any sort of shipping to send it, but you do need to actually send a mule, somebody who can carry it. So it does still take an action and a, a fresh mule. While I'm here, I guess I might as well haul some scree. sell that dagger. Uh, I think I'll just pick up some meat because I'm lazy and hungry. Okay. So I guess I'll just kind of do the usual stuff now. And then I'll kind of show you the new improved uh, crafting screen which is going to be very helpful to you. Okay, that's not supposed to happen. Anyway. Uh, claim land. Ah, sweet. So, uh, there was an abandoned card on the mountain I just claimed, and I it was a double weave shawl inside, which I will not fail to take advantage of. Dig that art there, you see that? Like a little fur. Yeah. Hats off to Haley on that one. I love her equipment. Um, I don't have to put that away. I have enough food. I guess I'll just try to get together some basic stuff. Plants of wheat fields. Maybe get a bit of firewood. I'll eat that. So 
Alright, there's a couple of glitches here, but uh, you can figure out how to sort of... You know, usually this reset type action clears all of the issues, so if something is weird, just drag a guy on there and then reset him. That usually does it. Ah, uh, Unity. The problems of an amateur. Feel free to roll your eyes, pros, but, uh, you know, teaching yourself always, always a laugh. <clears throat> so, let's see. We have up to medium concentration here, which means that this may be a good time to go to the tavern and poke around. We might need a little bit of help for this. Alright, well, it doesn't look like there's any visitors at the tables, so let's go to the Mercenary Guild, which is now open. Ah, okay. So, uh, basically, when you go and visit the Registrar, every month there might be some mercenaries available for hire. Uh, there's four different kinds right now. They have sort of different styles and weaponry and so forth. Right now there's just an Iron Viper available. Um, and they're pretty awesome because they're defensive with shields and they have poison long spears. They can hit people in the back row um, and are generally just badasses, but they're also pretty expensive. You can see it's 48 cents uh, to hire. And then all mercenaries, to keep them hired once they're hired, it's half price retainer. So he'd cost me 24 cents a month each month to keep on. And uh, he's not going to be enough. Well, he probably would be. But I'm actually going to hold off till next month and see if I can't get more mercs at once to save money. And if the concentration's not that bad right now. I'm going to use my combat action to take this. I also have him water because it's kind of drudgery. I really do need some stone. I could probably start up a, a pit in the mountain if I get a little more timber together. Wow, that was a that was a good one. All right, I'll dig a, a stone pit. Get a little bit of stone. See if I can grab some fish. Oh, that would make my life so much easier. Ouch. Alright, well, I'm gonna have to have Crux overwork and go to the market. I don't really have any other alternative to get food at the moment. Oh, I can gather some clay there. I can't really afford to sell the stone. I'll just leave it. Not ideal. And probably try to grab some ginseng because I'm gonna get sick. Ugh, no, I didn't. Lydia did. You've heard some ginseng? I'll give me some ginseng. And eat some cheese. Uh, I'm gonna have Lydia water and then just rest. Resting you can do in the um, dormitorium. It's a good way to try to deal with disease, make sure you don't get sicker. Uh, of course, it takes up actions, but getting really sick is kind of scary. So... Concentration's pretty much the same. Let's go take a look at the tavern again. Oh, the cabbage fanatic. That's good news for us. The fanatic opens his mouth to speak. The foul stench of cabbage watching, uh, wafting directly into your face. Got any cabbage? He asks, surprising precisely no one. If you do, I'll buy five. If you don't, I'll give you five. Everyone should have cabbage. Debatable, but not with this addict. Well, we don't have any cabbage, so lucky us. We just got fed thanks to the generosity of that madman. <clears throat> you can see it's useful to poke around in the tavern from time to time. Alright, so let's go back to the registrar. Oh, great. Nettered. One expensive Grey Warden. They're uh, the longbow wielding types. Really great at a range. They can snipe, but uh, if they they really just get bashed on in hand to hand, so you really should have somebody in front of them covering them. Uh, again, this isn't really a lineup that I wanted, I'm just gonna hold off. And poke around in the villa looking for stuff to do. I have food. I kinda wanted to keep working on the tools, I could show you the new crafting situation. Okay, yeah, so, if you click on the Fabrica now, uh, the character you pick pops up here to let you know who you're using, and a ledger comes up, and you can see all of the new items. There are quite a few. Um, you can click to see what's available, and then just click on the category again to go back. It's a lot faster than the old system. A lot faster. Uh, and it gives you a chance to really go through everything quickly to see what's available. 
Uh, these are all just with the first level Fabrica, so there's nothing requiring uh, forging or metal except the studded leather. Um, and you would still need copper to make it. Uh, so anyway, components are sort of the basic pieces for tools. If you've seen my crafting uh, Let's Play earlier, you'd remember that. But, um, or you might not, because there's a lot in that one. So if you want to make like spears, fishing poles, you'll need poles like axes and hammers, handles. So I'm going to make a handle. And I'm going to make a pole. So that's to say, a couple of sets. Uh, you can turn one timber into uh, a number of them. And you can see, uh, I might as well mention that the CP remaining, the level of your workshop determines how many like really good items you can make each turn. In this case, it's really just one. But really simple things like components, um, you can make as many times as you want per turn. It doesn't take that CP crafting points. And uh, that also applies to art objects, although they're not in yet. Uh, let's see. Just leave that alone. And I guess I'll probably put together a stone hammer. I was thinking. Oh no, rock hammer. What do I need? More stone, yeah, naturally. Alright. Now I'll put that together. There we go. She'll do a lot better next time. I really should get some clay or something. Jeez, come on, Caius. Sadness. Sadness day. At least I can feed everybody up. And Lydia got over her cold, which is good news. <sighs> I'll crux water this. And let's have a peek at the... Bandits are pretty calm so far. Let's peek in the taverna again. Yeah, that's just the prospector. We don't have much use for his wares right now. Ah, uh, this is a little bit better. We can use this to good effect. Alright, let's hire up, uh, yeah, Julian, this is a red blade. Red blades are kind of, uh, pretty standard melee types. Uh, well, I mean, they're actually pretty good. A little bit fragile, but pretty deadly. They have a throwing axe they can use to open up, uh, the combat without being retaliated on. And they are armed with spathas, which are really pretty advanced. Uh, they can do some piercing, bleeding. Nasty overall. I'm gonna grab Nettered and, uh... Well, whatever, I'm pretty... I can sure I can make the money back. I'll take a song too, just to prove a point. These guys are, or should be, mighty. Okay, so once you hire up these mercenaries, uh, you can see they appear down here, and it tells you, the retainer, what they cost to hold. If they've been wounded, uh, they can still fight for you, but there'll be a little wound icon to show you. They're, of course, in perfect health right now. So let's go over to this medium place and patrol for bandits. Nothing so far. Nothing so far. Oh, pretty easy going. still need to deal with. Uh, that's much better. I'm gonna put together a fishing spear for Caius. Yeah! That's what I'm talking about. Still need more clay. That is a lot better. Uh, I really didn't want to have to pay the retainers on these guys again. They're really expensive. Um, I'm going to have Caius overwork and patrol in the hopes that I can provoke a combat. Oh, there we go. Ugh, being weird. There we go. Alrighty. Uh... Oh wow, that was a good move. Uh, okay, so you can see these Grey Wardens, they have um, like the ability to snipe, which basically you can see here, if I click, it puts them in delayed action at the end, but they take a more accurate and powerful shot. Uh, he'll just shoot a regular one. Ow. Ah. I'm gonna throw my throwing axe at him. Oh, that's right. All 
Alright. Alright, not bad. Oh, it's a drought. Of course. I'll take a break from fighting for a moment. Should be able to do some damage with this kiln order. Sell this dagger. Pull some more scree. It's a little better. I think I'd like to make a timber axe. Yes. Yeah, there's some reed also, I think. And I'll chop some firewood here. Uh, now that's a feast. If I'm smart, I'd make a sickle for this. Yeah, nice. Ah, uh, good. That'll take care of the wheat for the time being. Maybe she can get some more clay for Caius. Yeah. now, so that's good. Still a little light on food. Just got that fishing spear. Sweet. Oh, I should do some cooking. Cook up uh, some fish. I suppose there was an herbalist. I'm just hoping. Oh, a grizzled hunter. Wow, that's a lot of great meat. I really don't have that much use for it. No, I think that'll be fine. I'll hold on to one cheese if I only eat none. So that's good. I'll do that. Hmm. I'm trying to think. I believe planting some Parsnips would be a good move. They should turn into sugar parsnips right before I harvest them. I do need a little more wood as well. Lydia's kind of been doing the survival trip, so... Let's see... Go check out the tavern. Maybe there's some cheap mercs. Not cheap enough. <clears throat> you see this uh, unwalled town here at the top? There's one other thing that you can do with unwalled towns right now. You can assault them. Um, although, in this case, I don't have enough. Yeah. Attack the local town militia with the aim of seizing control of the town and appointing a friendly administrator. So basically, um, weaker towns with not so fancy militia and no walls, you can run in there and basically try to take over by attacking the militia. Uh, you can, if you go to town info, you can actually see what the militia consists of. In this case, there's uh, two sword militias, a staff militia, and three bow militias. Pretty nasty, but not not too bad for like experienced mercenaries and mass to take down. Which is what I've been trying to collect for you people but I'm not getting the rolls that I want for the tavern. Uh, well, I'll just bite the bullet, I guess. More fish, more fish. Yeah, wow. 
Good stuff. Let's cook some more. Cheese soup? Fish soup? Ah, alright. Cheese soup. Okay, now, uh, <clears throat> I didn't do this before. Oh, man. Lucky one. No, I will not. Oh, well, too bad. You'll notice how, uh, during the feeding phase, these merc icons will turn red and will say, we'll leave. It assumes that you don't want to keep a mercenary unless you renew them. So you can see here, it cost me 21 and 26, respectively, to renew their wages. Which is making me very broke indeed but I'm hoping I'll be able to pull together enough to attack a town and show you guys what's up. Uh, of course, the very idea of hiring more mercenaries at this point is amusing. Cade is 54. But why not, right? I mean, it puts me down to 10 cents. I'm nearly broke. But, you know, this is why we're here. Let's go do it. Assault the town. Cade I can put in the back because he has a spear. Alright, this should be interesting. As you can see there's a nice get one shot here. Nope. Okay, two rounds. Alright, the bowman took a big chunk out of him. Shield helped him out. Ow. Alright, I'm gonna use my throwing axe here. Not that guy. Nope, of course not. Oh, I forgot to put his short sword on. Uh, he's fighting with the flint sickle. Uh, that's bad news. Oh. Oh, fantastic. Let's have a guard. Oh my god, this is close. Oh man. Poison him, but he's also down. Uh, he's bleeding. Uh, hit him. Nice, wow. These guys are just destroying him. You can see what I mean. The mercenaries are really a match for these militia types. Ow. Ugh, of course. Crux is gonna go down. Ugh. Somebody take him out. Yes. Like, plus one. Don't bleed to death. Don't bleed to death. Ugh. Alright, do it. Hit him. Oh my god. Thank you. It's over! Alright, so you can see here, based on how much damage people took, um, Armand got wounded, Crux got wounded, uh, but Demetos and Kate are okay. Uh, and then you can see I got a nice chunk of XP, a pretty decent chunk of money from the militia, and then a bunch of scavenged items here. Very nice. Septim dislike their old corrupt administration. They are indifferent. Well, look at that. So, uh, not only did I take over their town, but they actually kind of felt like I did them a favor. So you can see now I have, uh, my ownership marker on Septim, and... Under certain circumstances, they would send me a tribute every month. So, um, they also... Uh, but just because you've taken over a town, it doesn't mean that they necessarily like you. Um, depending on certain, you know, circumstances. Uh, if they don't, then they consider themselves oppressed, and basically there's a resistance, and that just means that the town operates at half efficiency, it sends half goods, uh, you get half tax revenues, until they like you better, uh, which, if it's bad, you know, recovers slowly over time. 
Once it gets to neutral, though, um, most towns they won't necessarily like you more than neutral unless you take specific actions. Uh, some character abilities can help you with that. Uh, there's a wide variety of things you can do to get towns to like you. But the town liking you also has to do with the residents' abilities. I can see the sage here. Um, depending on the, your reputation with the town, uh, they'll help you. And even if you've taken over the town, the resident might still refuse to help you if the town doesn't like you, so you have to keep that in mind. So that's, uh, you can see Armand here is wounded, Crux is wounded, and uh, my parsnips are suffering from drought time. I'm gonna have Crux rest, we'll do one water, rest one, Caius will water the other, hopefully pull a fish, or more, nice. Uh, Lydia, I'm gonna have her run to the market, and maybe see if I can sell some stuff. Oh, that's right. I got a bunch of stuff from them. Oh, yeah, I can sell two short swords. Keep the shield. <sighs> Attacking that town saved my bacon. Let's see. Get some leather. Get some more leather armor together. Some charcoal for the winter. So many options. This for a fishing rod. Mm. I'm gonna get some hides. I like it for the winter. Although I'll probably space it out a little bit here. Uh, clothing, heavy furs. Crux put those on. I oh, know he's got the double weave, legit. Um, there we go. I will not be paying to hire any of these people back. Oh, sweet. Lydia got a class change. I can turn her into another warrior or an artisan, which was my hope. Uh, I'm gonna give her careful planner. Oh, sweet. Caius had much the same choice. But I already have a warrior, so I'm gonna take him as a ranger. And I think I'll take uh, well, forestry, I guess. I need to manage that one forest I have. Everybody eat up. Looks like Krug's got over his wounds. That's what Tuff's all about, son. Or daughter. <laughs> Let's water the... Man, this drought is never-ending. I have Caius take a look and see what he can see. Ooh, the forest with a recent fire. Crux is gonna pull that. Get some charcoal and firewood. Man, good stuff. I wonder if I have any studios. I can spin out a spinnery. I need more stone. Well, that's something I can deal with. Construct some stone! <clears throat> Anyway, I, oh, let me uh, just pull together a few other things for you here. I need a handle. Okay, so uh, I haven't really talked about all of the various uh, weapons that you have. And the mercenaries make it easy for you to jump right in and uh, do some damage, but if you want to do it yourself, because um, <clears throat> your characters are only eligible for the bonus XP from combat, so they actually run in there and fight. Even if that means you just give your farmhand like a shield and a sling and put him in the back, row and he just you know guards the whole time that's the only way you have to take the risk so um, if you want to be arming your folks uh, these are sort of the primitive options you have with the first level workshop right now uh, melee weapons basically um, combinations of stone poles and handles these all have different effects you can kind of figure them out as you go but um, you know, like, bleeding adds that status that you might take damage at the end of every round, depending on how much you're bleeding. It builds up over time. Uh, when you roll a pierce, their armor is totally ignored, so it's a, it's a good strike against armored enemies. Uh, stunning is something that basically just, at first, if you stun them once, it just gives them a penalty to all of their rolls, but if you stun them again, they lose their turn, and they can't do anything, or react. Um, and then parry gives you a chance to, to lower their attack during a simultaneous attack, basically. If you're reacting and you roll a parry, uh, their attack is retroactively worsened, so it's like a defensive 
quality. Um, but you can you have to be able to react to use it. And the quarter staff has a lot of interesting stuff, including reach, which gives you priority um, rather than attacking simultaneously. Um, you get the first strike, which means if you knock the guy down or stun him, uh, it will cancel his attack before he has a chance to hit you. Uh, now, rending basically is particularly good at getting uh, knocking down highly defending, well, highly defensive opponents, people with shields, people that try to parry. Uh, Ren basically, when it's rolled, ignores all of those, and then Charge gives you the special ability to sacrifice a reaction uh, for a stronger attack. Um, although you can't parry during a charge, not that most axes can parry, they're pretty heavy. Uh, and so these all have various properties that you'll kind of have to experiment. And combat is just their blanket bonus to help you hit. The stronger it is, the better it is, the more combat you'll have. Um, short bow and broadhead arrows. Um, right now, as long as you have a quiver, uh, you'll be able to shoot the bow. There's no arrow counting or anything. Uh, but basically, you'll be fletching arrows into a common stock of arrows. And then with the quiver, quiver you'll be able to, uh, you know, for example, let's say that you've fletched uh, 12 broadhead arrows and 10 bodkin arrows, right? And you have uh, a generic arrow quiver accessory. When you go to equip it, uh, you would equip first the quiver, and then you would choose the arrow type like bodkin. And then what you would have equipped is a bodkin quiver. And then in combat, you would be able to deplete from the villa's stock of bodkin arrows. So if you had two archers, each with a bodkin quiver, they'd both be coming from that common stock. Um, so arrows and ammunition management should be much easier, and you just keep fletching until you have as much ammo as you want. Um, and at first you can only build broadhead arrows. Uh, you can scavenge fancier arrows from bandits or uh, upgrade your workshop. Let's see. And then slings, uh, they're nice just because they don't have ammo. The basic sling attack is just a rock and still, you know, can stun people pretty good. Do some damage, especially to unarmored types. And then uh, javelins are not particularly powerful, but you can chuck them and they prevent people from retaliating against you. And you can hold four in a set, which means that somebody armed with a javelin can last a long time from the back row and keep throwing without exposing themselves to too much danger. And then the only armors that you can make at the start um, are armors like non-metal armors, in this case leather, and then studded leather, which just has a little bit of copper put in it to help your slashing resistance. Um, and then battle accessories right now basically are just shields and quivers. Um, there's going to be a few other things, uh, sheets that let you bring alternate weapons, uh, battle packs, reuse items, uh, some other things. But early on they're pretty straightforward. Alright gang, um, so that's pretty much going to do it for this uh, next Let's Play of the Freeholder Alpha 4.5. Uh, I hope you enjoyed poking around and messing around with the combat. There's still lots more features to come and a lot more fun ways that it's going to be integrated. Uh, next up is going to be stealth, uh, characters, espionage, trading, smuggling, um, stealth and combat, just a whole bunch of really fun stuff. So uh, stay tuned, this thing is only going to get better. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, and uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.